Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be talking to you about my favorite Christian books that you need to read this year. I'm actually gonna break it off into a couple of different sections. One is gonna be nonfiction and then the other is gonna be fiction. And these have helped me to grow my faith. So I'm gonna start off with one you probably haven't heard of, which is Out of the Blue by Greg Martha. So this book is about Greg who had cancer and he's speaking from the perspective of how cancer actually brought him joy. That perspective to me just lit up my life and honestly just really brought to life the verse where James says, count your trials as blessings, which then leads me to Love Does by Bob Goff. This is genuinely one of my favorite books of all time. Bob came to Color Conference a few years ago in London and his talks changed my life entirely. It really helped me to be more fearless in God, to really just chase after God without fear because his personality and the way he lives his life is more how I aspire to live my life. So that definitely made me want to read his book. And when I did, oh my goodness, it's so fun packed with stories that feel like they're only in movies, not in real life. And you're just like, I wanna see a movie about Bob's life because it is so whimsical. If you need whimsy in your life, if you have lost the magic and the wonder and the whimsy of life, this book is for you. And then that leads me on to his other book, Everybody Always, which is about how to maintain that wonder and whimsy while still having to love difficult people. I don't know about you, but I sometimes struggle with loving people who are difficult, but that's what Jesus tells us to do. We have to love the creepiest people around. It's just amazing to see how Bob really brings the love of Jesus to the people who are creepy or difficult or whatever because Jesus loves them so much. So honestly, highly recommend this. Next, I'm gonna talk about Fresh Wind and Fresh Fire by Jim Cimbala. This one was actually recommended to me by my dad. It's all about prayer and how powerful prayer is, but it starts off with Jim talking about going from a church of 20 down to six to now being one of the biggest churches in America that has won Grammys. It's the Brooklyn Tabernacle Church. And he talks about people's stories and just how prayer is just so powerful. It really does give you that fresh wind and that fresh fire from the Holy Spirit and reminds you just how important communication with God is. Honestly, it stirred my spirit to want to pray more to want to just get to know God more and it's just so exciting. This one you may have not heard of, it's actually called Anonymous by Alicia Britt Cole. I don't know about you, but the last couple of years for me during this season have felt like an anonymous season, have felt like a hidden season, felt lonely, have felt just really difficult for me. And this book explores all about Jesus's hidden years because there's about 30 years of his life where we haven't heard that much of what actually happened in those 30 years before his ministry. It's fascinating studying about Jesus' hidden years and how that applies to us and just fills you up with hope for what God is doing in your life. So highly, highly recommend. The next book I'm gonna talk to you guys about is The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom. It's about her life before World War II, during World War II, and in the concentration camp. And it's fascinating to see, especially Betsy, her sister. I love Betsy. They end up going to the concentration camp and just to see Betsy's beautiful outlook on life, how to remain joyful and grateful even in the midst of much suffering, of much evil happening in the world is just the most beautiful thing is bringing Jesus into every sphere of your life, even when it feels like evil is winning. Jesus always has the victory, so it's honestly so beautiful. Wept reading it and just the joy that you feel reading it with him because of the joy that they feel in God is just the most beautiful 
thing and the most beautiful important lesson that all of us need to learn. The next one is I Am Not But I Know I Am by Louis Giglio. And it's all about, I don't know about you, but I definitely struggle with thinking that life is all about me. And it's amazing to put our lives into perspective that we are actually supporting roles in the great story of God. It really challenged me in my pride. Really loved that one. And then finally, last but not least, is The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. You probably have heard of this one, but in case you haven't, it is all about rest and how hurry is actually one of our greatest enemies in life. If you're hurrying, you probably get a little bit cranky. If you're late for something, you probably are gonna snap a little bit quicker. We were created to be able to rest and rest in God. I really recommend this one. It feels like, especially when you read that first chapter, you're just like, you have reminded me how much I needed rest in my life, so. So now we're gonna finish up the nonfiction portion. Without further ado, let's start off with some historical biblical fiction. So I'm gonna go for the Mark of the Lion series by Francine Rivers. It is three books in one series. It starts off with a voice in the wind and it's all about Hadassah. And Hadassah lives after Jesus resurrected during the early church, but when Jerusalem fell and she's taken captive to Rome and it's fascinating. It's also a love story. It really challenges you as she suffered but still remained faithful and still remained joyful in God. It's one of those books that is a serious page turner. You're just gonna wanna read it the entire night, not wanna go to sleep. The next series that I'm gonna talk about is Connellan Cassette, Out of Egypt, and then it goes into Cities of Refuge. They all kind of tie in together. It starts off with Kira, who is an Egyptian during the time that the Hebrews are still slaves to the Egyptians, and she ends up leaving with the Israelites. And it's just fascinating to see it from a perspective of an Egyptian in the time that they actually encountered the Red Sea, crossed it, and there's some love in there as well. This helps me to understand the context of that time a lot better. So that is a three book series. It kind of goes into different characters. And then the third one, there's one of the characters that she brings into the Cities of Refuge series. It's all about Mariah, who very, very accidentally ends up killing the lives of these two boys and she runs to the city of refuge and there's love in it as well. Mariah and Derek are just some of my favorite characters. You love Derek and you love Mariah together and they are in each of the four stories so you feel like you nearly witness their lives. And another one of Connell's series is The Covenant House. It's about when the Philistines had the Ark of the Covenant and then they had so many plagues put upon them that actually they hooked up the Ark of the Covenant onto some cows and it led them back to the Hebrews. But actually Connellan places two kids on this journey, watching the Ark of the Covenant and following the Ark of the Covenant, two Philistine kids, their lives as they grow up in Hebrew land, ended up becoming a part of the Hebrews and there's romance as always, which I love. Connellan in every single one of her books, it's a page turner. Next, one of my favorite authors is Tessa Afshar. Pretty much all of her books. The one we're gonna start off with is Thief of Corinth because it leads on to several other books. So it is all about Ariadne who runs away from her grandfather's house to her dad's house in Corinth, but then ends up finding out a huge secret. There's romance as per usual because I love a little bit of romance. But when the wrong person discovers their secret, their future and their very lives are hanging in the balance. And then it leads on to several other books. There's another book about Priscilla and Aquila, which is one of the couples that Paul mentions in one of his letters as well. It's so many different characters that Paul wrote about are mentioned in this and it's just fascinating to kind of be a part of. Like Lydia, the seller of purple. That was an incredible book called Bread of Angels by Tessa. So that's all kind of interwoven. Okay, so I'm gonna finish off with whose waves these are. It actually won an award back in 2019, the Christie Award, I believe. Amanda writes in such a way that feels like it's a literature dance with the entire book keeping me on my toes, which sometimes can be rare these days. She turns the character's experiences with grief into something beautiful, into a beautiful garden where the seed of grief is planted. It turns into a beautiful story of hope, faith, and love. And it's a very important book about 
about history, especially these days, because it's all about World War II, and sometimes I think we are quick to forget our past and our history. Oh man, I cried so many tears, but it was so beautiful. So I hope you all enjoyed both the nonfiction and the fiction. Let me know if you've read any of these and which one you're excited to read. I would love to know and I'll have plenty more for you guys. I am sure I've got a challenge to read 36 books this year. So I'll have loads for you guys. I'll probably update you either at the end of the year or the beginning of next year with all of my new favorite ones. And just keep updated on my Instagram where you'll find what I'm currently reading. Or Goodreads, I love the app Goodreads so you can find what I'm currently reading and what I've read this year so far on there as well. All right, I'll catch you guys soon, bye.